right, we're back on the Immigration Answer Show. I didn't think it was working. The stream yard was acting a little bit strange. Hello, everybody. It's James Oliver Hacking the Third. Today is the first day of Ramadan. It is the 23rd day of March. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you all have had a wonderful Thursday. I'm trying to bring the energy. I'm trying to bring the noise. I'm trying to bring the funk to immigration. That's funk, F-U-N-K. I am not cussing already on this show. I am here solo today. I'm running the boards. I'm doing the calls. I'm taking the comments. I probably won't be able to spend much time on the comments. Huli is working, uh, answering phones for the firm. Skyla's out for today. So it's just me today and tomorrow. I'll be doing my best. I'll be here today and tomorrow at 4 p.m. for a full hour, answering as many of your immigration law-related questions as possible. Uh, let me put the uh, link to the uh to the waiting room so that you can get in the waiting room if you're not on our text list you should text the word show 314-470-3300 text the word show s-h-o-w and you will be the first in line to ask me questions remember for those in the waiting room i always go to the people on camera first um so here's the link remember everything you say is public um so if you want to keep something confidential, don't say it on YouTube. All right, here we go. Um, let's see what channel's here. Channel, channel, are you with us? You're on mute. I guess it's Mark. Hi, Mark. You're on mute. Stan James. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing today? I'm well. I know you were in the waiting room yesterday. I wasn't able to get to you. I'm sorry about that. You were the first one up today. How are you doing? Doing good, and just just I do have two questions for you. Um, my I just get a, not the pool. I just got my interview for for my green card to marriage page. But my question is, um, my before I was meet my wife, I was living in Connecticut, but my wife from Massachusetts, but she moved with me. We live in Connecticut, but her driver license. Still in under can under masters of shares. We want to know if that not going to be the issue for for USCIS interview. Yes, you should get that changed right away. Why why did you wait so long to change it? Uh, we didn't know if we have to change. That's how we tried to wait for the wait home. I mean, uh, try to ask you a question to know if we have to change it. Well, but to me, it's to me. But to me, that's something that's just sort of common sense. You shouldn't even have to ask me. I mean, think about it. You're going to go into a government office. You're going to okay. say, yeah, we are married. This is my wife. Oh, but yeah, we have to, the first thing they're going to do is say, can I see your green card, your work card, your passport, your driver's license? And they're going to say, oh, this is interesting. One of you lives in Massachusetts. One of you lives in Connecticut. That's really strange. Do you really okay. live together? Do I need to go talk okay. to your landlord? Does the landlord know who this is? I mean, you're just opening a huge can of worms by having okay. two different states driver's licenses. Oh, okay, okay. But but she don't get no passport. You think that's going to be a, the issue? No, no. But they ask for ID, and the first thing they're going to ask for is the driver's license, and then they're going to – and it's an easy trick from a USCIS office, the driver's license question. Okay, all right. Then, then the second one, but – um. When she was when she was filed my my paperwork, she would have two jobs. Now she only have one. Then now she just get the 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 new job. You gonna start, I think this week. But she want but she still make twenty six thousand dollars. But she still she know she wanna know if not that if that not gonna be a problem for for them. Cause they yeah. said they don't cut my income. It the she you're the immigrant, right? Yes. It probably won't come up other than they'll ask her where she's working and she should just say where she's working. She shouldn't give a big explanation. She shouldn't say I switched from one job to another. She shouldn't say I'm still making $26,000. They'll say, where do you work? And she says, I work at McDonald's. Okay. And then they just check the address. Um, usually they decide the affidavit of support stuff before it gets to the field office. So it, it shouldn't be a problem. They might ask for a co-sponsor. I've seen it happen once or twice, but it's pretty unusual. Okay, all right. So, like, I know we. I don't, do you have any tip you can give me, just in case something I didn't know, like, um, I should something I should to carry, or because um, to my interview. Well, how long ago did you file? 
Um, we filed this in the March. I think March twenty twenty. I mean, I think we filed the the green card is uh, April twenty two, two thousand twenty two. So just about a year ago. Yeah, yeah, ago. When did you get your work card? I get my work card. I think it was in November. Okay, and so you have a social security number. Yes. So you should have some more documents of everything of your real, you should have a lot more evidence. So you should be able to go in there. You've been waiting for a year for your interview. You've had your work card since November. You should have lots of bank statements, lots of credit card statements, lots of bills and stuff with both your names on it at the right address. Yeah, we have the, we have the joint account together. We have a lease, the, the, the electric. We full, we filed a tax together this year. I mean, last year. Do you use and, the bank? Do you use the bank account regularly? Like, is it is it an active account? Yes, we we use it. Then she had me her to her credit card. Like, uh, um, we have a few couple of paper, but I don't know if so. Bring all of it. Bring all of. Don't don't say what's the least amount I can bring. Say what's the most amount I can bring. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Mark. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. Which field office is okay, it? Okay. Okay. I will. I will. I I don't. I think in a, in in offer. Okay. All right. Oh, good thank luck. Thank you very much. All right. All right see thank ya. you. I would love yep. I've been at Hartford office. They're very nice there. So that that's all good. All right. Yeah, that's right. Um, Tony says having two different driver's licenses, inviting a Stokes interview. That is my TikTok for tomorrow. Thanks everybody. Thanks Tony. And thanks Mark. Um, that's right. Not having the same driver's licenses is just a no brainer and a, an easy way to get yourself into trouble all right let's say hi to saeed hi saeed hey jim how's it going well how are you doing you're not driving are you no i'm not i'm just i uh, needed some privacy inside decided to sit in my car sure what can i help you with uh i am reaching out because i'm in the process of filling out an i-129 f um and there's the section about the criminal history information okay. uh, i was a naive college student and got into some trouble uh, in a state where marijuana is uh, decriminalized, but I know that's not how it operates under federal law. The issue here is I had three citations, but was only fined for two of them. I called the state house, uh, the courthouse, and they said that it looked like one of them was dropped. Uh, and I want to be as truthful as possible in my application. I'm waiting for attested copies uh, to arrive from the courthouse. Um, the question asked if I was convicted or arrested three or more times relating to a controlled substance. I don't think I was, but I just want to make sure that. I'm so these were all cite these were all citations. Uh, yes. And what is the exact language of the question? It says, "Do you have three or more arrests or convictions relating to a controlled substance?" So you weren't arrested for any of those. You just received citations. That's right. And you only had two that completed. One one got dropped. That's right. So it sounds like you can truthfully say no. Okay. Do I provide more information as to in the section at the end of the form saying what happened? I would. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, they're not going to get too worked up over this. Um, why are you doing the fiance route and not the marriage route? I'm so down on I-129 and F's right now. It's just the, so, the state the State department is really treating those cases poorly. So the issue is uh, my fiance is in Afghanistan and the oh. government there is not issuing marriage certificates to anyone. Yep. Um, so, so that's, that's, that's your, the issue. That's your only choice. Yep. 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 Gotta go. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't know if you have any other suggestions as to, I'm pretty much, I'm just waiting for my court attested copies to show up. Um, but I know the Afghanistan situation is particularly bad. There's no embassy. There's no diplomatic relations. Um, I'm assuming they don't care that there is a human, humanitarian crisis going on there to expedite any of those cases or. Does your fiance have any other relatives in the United States besides you? Uh she might have a cousin, but I don't think so. 
Yeah, the only thing I would think about is could we get her parole, like humanitarian parole to come, but you you might just be wasting your time and it might just be better to get the I-129F on file. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and and you, since... You, you've seen her face-to-face -face in the last two years? Yeah, I, I saw her in November. And I, okay. I took pictures and provided all of that in my application. Great. Um, and then since there's no diplomatic relations, though... They would have to go to a third country whenever there is probably Pakistan. Up an interview. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Do you have any other things that I should be keeping an eye out for or any common mistakes that people make on their I-129F? I've read the instructions thoroughly several times, but it's just one make of those sure things where I'm... You're going to include a statement, a signed statement from each of you that says you plan to get married within 90 days of arrival? Yeah, I have that and a letter from her as well. I think you're in good fighting. shape. Um, and then do they ask, do they bring that information up about my criminal history when they interview her? Yeah. In fact, I just made a TikTok about this today. That That's that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, she should know about that. You know, she should know about that because if not, it's not so much about the fact that you have the criminal matter. It's that they begin to doubt the relationship if there hasn't been transparency between the couple. So when you, whenever you have bad stuff in your past, either side, the other one needs to know about it because if you get asked about it, that can be a problem. So I, I hear that and I know that they don't probably don't care that, you know, we're Muslims and we're not required to expose our sins prior to the marriage. Um, and so I don't know, I'm in a sticky situation where I'm past that. That was a stupid year of my from my college experience where I don't want to bring it up and I, I've moved past that. Um, but I also don't want it to make it seem like I'm concealing anything. Right. Like, that, and that to me, so I'm just the immigration lawyer. I'm not the imam. I'm not the shape. I can't, <laughs> I can't give you the religious advice other than to say, she's probably not going to be that worked up about it. But if you, if you tell her seven years from now, that's probably going to be a bigger deal than, than now. And what you don't want is for you to tell USCIS and them to tell the state department and them to be sitting there across the table from her, and then they they could deny her for that, you know, not because you have the conviction, but because she didn't know about it. Okay. All right. So I understand the religious aspect of it, but you have other issues. Yeah. Namely yeah. that you namely that you want to get a fiance case approved. So I think you need to tell her. Yeah. All right. I will do that. Um, and then I saw that I. I, I I've seen some of your videos that talk about waiting times for some of the service centers and how some of them are lower than others, but it's all untrue or it's BS. Is that still the case? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's all BS. And more importantly, it's all case specific. So you could have a case that shows up in a faster service center that is clean and easy and it just gets through very fast. You could have a case that goes to a faster service center but it's complicated and then it slows it down so i i put no weight in the pro stated processing times okay and one final question i apologize so okay. i i know that the the criminal history section i am a little worked up about that um it, it i know they're trying to figure out if i have good moral character now i have turned things around quite a bit i work in a field where you know i'm talking i work with political uh campaigns throughout the country. I work with reporters throughout the country um, involved in politics. So I was wondering, does it, is it helpful at all if I include a letter explaining what I do for work now, how I've turned things around, or is that just overkill and unnecessary? I, no, I, think, I think that'd be worthwhile. I mean, I think you're getting more anxious about it than they are. Um, what they really want to know in a fiance case is whether you've ever been abusive to women or to children. That's okay. really what the criminal stuff is because of the Violence Against Women Act. They're sort of required to, to, to screen cases for that. Mm -hmm. So as long as your convictions are not related to that, I don't think they're going to get that worked up over it. I think you might feel better if you do include a letter like that, but I don't think you have to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably am overthinking a little bit. It happened like 14 years ago and it was yeah. a possession charge in a state where it's a criminalized. But... Yeah. But, and you said, you, you said they're worried about your good moral character. I don't think that they are. I think they just want to make sure that you don't have those kinds of convictions that I mentioned and everything else. It's just, they're, they're not going to get worked up about it. They, they actually can't get worked up about it. Okay. All right. Uh, well, this is, in other words, helpful. in other words, in, in other words, to help you feel better, my understanding is they can't deny a 
fiance visa to someone because the u.s citizen has some marijuana convictions yeah like they can't that would make sense i would hope <laughs> so uh, hopefully that makes you feel better i appreciate that um well this has been super helpful i, I really appreciate it and i love the content so thank you all right Said. yep see uh, you buddy bye 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 all right that was saeed let's see what ruben has to say hey ruben hey, hey jim how you doing today i'm doing well how are you doing I'm doing pretty good. I just want to thank you very much for all what you do, you and your team. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Thanks. Yes. Okay. My question is that um, I came here with a K-1 visa, which is um, 2017 August, and we got married um, August 26, 2017. But because of financial problems, my wife failed to, you know, adjust my status right on time for me. So I was placing removal proceedings. So before my court date, the IC told her to file I-130 and I-485, so we did. So at my first hearing, the judge asked me, hey, so have you guys filed any, any paperwork? And we said, yeah, we did. We filed I-485 and I-130. And he said that we should wait for the I-130 to get approved first. So we waited. And when the I-130 get approved, went for my second hearing, and the judge was retired. And then you got some old hard ass. I'm sorry, what's that? And then you got some old hard ass judge, not the nice judge you had before. Yeah. So, um, so what we did is that um, the previous judge told us that he doesn't have my I-485 with, with him because we accidentally filed with USCIS. Yeah, yeah. So we then asked US, USCIS to send the I-485 to the court. So they did, but because of the virus, you know, I couldn't make it to any court hearing. Yeah. So my lawyer filed for um, prosecutorial discretion for me, which my removal proceeding was terminated. Terminated. Yes. So we didn't go with my old application, but um, he told me that we need to refile the I-485. So we did. Yeah. So which I received uh, a request for evidence for a joint sponsor because my wife is not making enough. Still which, that old problem. Still that same old problem that got us in trouble in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, with you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So my question is that now, um, are they going to give me two years green card or are they going to give me 10 years green card since we've been married for uh, almost six years now because I was battling with the removal proceedings? So I don't know what's going to happen. That's my, my only concern. You're going to get a 10 year green card if the case is approved. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's my only consent. So, so the question, the question always is no matter how many 45s you filed, no matter how, what has happened, the question is on the day that they issue the green card, okay. have you, have you been married more than two years? You've been married six years. So you're going to get a 10 year green card. Then you'll have to wait three years and then you can apply for citizenship. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, and I don't know I, when when the request for evidence was responded. Um, I think it's been 108 days today, and no response yet. They haven't really made a decision on it. I don't well, know why. So I, I think I know why. So so you've sort of confused them, right? So so think about it from their point of view. Hey, everybody, here comes Ruben. Ruben's engaged to a U.S. citizen. Ruben's going to get married. Oh, Ruben got married. All right, Ruben, file that 45. Well, Ruben didn't have the money to file the 45. So then Ruben gets put into removal proceedings. So Ruben files an I-130 and a 45 with USCIS. Oops, wait, the 45 should have been filed with the immigration court. So 45 is either transferred or filed with the immigration court. Then the judge terminates proceedings and we file a new 45. So there's all these Ruben 45s floating around, right? Okay. So... I mean, you know, I complain about USCIS all the time, but I think in this particular case, the reason the case is sitting is because they, they don't know which one is the right one to work on. They don't know which one. I mean, they're all still pending. So you've sort of overwhelmed them with too many 485. So you might be calling me later to sue them to try to get a final decision on your green card because they might just sit on it because they're just flat out confused by all the applications that you have filed. Yeah, but the the previous one was sent to the court. Yeah, I know, the but that's like that's like that's like send 
anytime you're talking about sending a 45 from USCIS to the immigration court or from the immigration court to USCIS, when you're talking about that level, I know it's, I know it's ridiculous. It's the federal government. They can't really talk to each other. So, so the idea that it's all going to come together and catch up with each other, very hard to pull off. Okay. Even though you and I could do it. If you were, if you were the EOIR and I was immigration, you would just say, Hey, Jim, here's Ruben's case. But for some reason they can't pull that off. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Good luck. Sounds like, sounds like you're getting real close. So hang in there. All right. Thank you very much. You got it. All right, everybody. So, excuse me. We are 20 minutes into the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. I'm an immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. I appreciate all of you being here. I appreciate Ruben and everyone else who's come on the show. Remember, if you're in the waiting room and you want to come on, I need to see your face so they know that you're live. Um, If you haven't already, leave us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. And I'll put the information for those who want to ask a question into the chat. There you go. Kima is here. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, Kima. You're on mute, my friend. Hi, Jim. Thank you for having me. Sure. How you doing? I'm good. All right. So I came here last year, April 2022. Um, my then boyfriend decided that we should get married. So I didn't return home. Okay. So we got married in September last year. Congratulations. Thank you. He is a green card holder. Yeah. So I did not do any filing of the paperwork as yet. Oh, wait a minute. So so you entered on a B1, B2 or an F1? The B1, B2. So did you get married before the six months were up or after? After we did it in September. Yeah. So that was a big mistake. You should have gotten married and filed for the green card before your six months were up. Now, oh, now no, we got married before, before I was supposed to return home in October. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So right. how did your husband get his green card? Through um, filing his father. Through his father. Okay. Yeah. And, um, when did he get his green card? In April 2019. April 2019. So, yes. so he can apply for citizenship next year. All right. Okay. And so what's your question for me? All right. So I am thinking, what's the next move? What would you advise us to do? Should I submit my, my documents now, do the form I-130 or just wait? Until he gets his citizenship, then I proceed in um, submitting my documents. So when I was a brand new immigration lawyer, the very first deportation case I had was your fact scenario. So lady comes on a visit visa. She's married to a green card holder. He's going to be able to apply for citizenship in about a year. Do they sit tight and wait to see what happens or do they do they go ahead and apply? This is a tough one because like I said, you should have done all this before. So the problem is now you're out of status and and they could, they could work your case very quickly and you could get an interview while he's still a green card holder. If he, you have a, you have an overstay problem. You're not an immediate relative. So you have a problem um, because you didn't file on time. So I think it's a tough call. I don't, I'd want to, I'd want to talk to you and your husband and talk yes. it all through before, before we say what the best course of action to be would be. And and I don't think you should do this without a lawyer anyway. So if you want to call the office and tell them you came on the show and that you want to talk to one of our lawyers yes. um, about having us help you, um, I would suggest that I'll put the number in the, in the, uh, in the queue. Um, but I don't think you want to do this on your own. Oh, Kima's out of here. All right. Well, there's the number. If Kima needs it, she can call us back. All right. Let's say hi to Sadiq. Sadiq, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing all right. Let's help, Jim. I like that shirt. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, it's been a while I've been following you, and uh, I like all the contents. So beautiful. Uh, so uh, what I was trying to ask is, uh, uh, actually, I came here in 2015. Uh, I have one visa. And uh, in 2017, I got married to a U.S. citizen. Uh, from we, we see each other from school, and uh, I got married with that. And uh, things were going good. You know, until 2019, she decided to take uh, the petition. Uh, she she don't want to she don't want to longer be a petition. And uh, I got a a, a message from uh, the USIS saying that uh, my petitioners would draw the case, and uh, the case was denied. So, but obviously, before uh, one year before. I get married. I did a, an asylum case in 2016 because my country was in a, uh, in a problem and I, I couldn't return. So, and uh, since then, the asylum case hasn't been approved. And uh, after they denied the, uh, the marriage, uh, kind of, uh, marriage uh, base, they told me, you know, there's no problem. I could continue with the asylum case which uh, I am until today. So my question is, uh, I have I remarried again in 2000, 2001. And, 2021. Uh, 2021, sorry, 2021. Okay. I remarried remar again. And uh, me and my wife, uh, my wife was the one filing the, the stuff. I haven't filed anything. She was a US citizen. No, she was filing it this year and uh, she filed the case. I didn't. We were sitting down, but I didn't know. When. The paperwork and all that. Especially for we filed the one I one thirty and the one forty eight. I mean four eighty five. They send us a notice saying they reject the I four eighty five because of because of the application type of the form. So. They, were, they said the reason uh, we I try to call, but they didn't send all the documents, all the evidence in the, the, the application itself. So I try to call the USIS, and uh, the person that was there saying, "Oh, I have to refile the uh, the I four eighty five because of the uh, application reason," and they couldn't send the evidence. The person told me to send the application alone, uh, and if they need any evidence, they will let me know. And uh, a week later, we got an, another no, a rejection notice about uh, the I-130 again, saying that uh, we have to file both together for them to consider uh, looking at the case. So I don't know what, what can we do now since they didn't send all the evidence. Do I have to provide? Uh, different evidence and all the medical record and all that you have to provide it again so so let, let's back up a minute so so you you have you have an interesting immigration history so you entered on an f1 mm -hmm. you applied for asylum that yeah. asylum case is still pending right yeah as far as the f1 i assume you stopped going to school a while ago and you you don't have a current i-20 is that fair to say yeah okay so then you married person number one, person number one filed an I-130 and a 45 for you. And then person number one notified USCIS that they wanted to withdraw the I-130. And then the I-130 got withdrawn and the 45 got denied because there was no basis for you to adjust. Yeah. Your asylum case has not had an interview. You've not been sent to immigration court. You're still seeking asylum. I assume you're getting a work card through that. Yeah, I, I got a work card through that. Okay, and so then you marry person number two, and person did you say did you did you say person number two filed the I one thirty and the forty five without you knowing? Is that what you said or no? No, no, no. We we both know she was the one uh, uh, on it, but we both we both were signing all the paperwork and all that. Okay, and then know, yeah, so ultimately ultimately both the forty five got rejected and the I one thirty got rejected. Do they keep your filing fees or do they return the filing fees? Uh, they returned the filing fields, but they didn't return like the medical. All the documents, you know, yeah. All the, all the documents so, 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 Deke, this might be the best thing that ever happened to you. You should not be proceeding in filing a case with person number two without a lawyer. 
your history is too complicated. They are going to come after you with knives. They think you're working the system, that you're doing whatever you can to keep from going back home, that you filed this asylum case, that you married person number one. They're going to, I can almost guarantee that they're going to go talk to person number one and try to get them to tell them that she married you because you paid her or because it wasn't real or to badmouth you in some way. So you've got, you've got, you've got to prove up two marriages. You got to prove that the first marriage was real. You got to prove that your asylum case wasn't BS and you have to prove that this new marriage is real. So your case needs a lot of work and it might be the best thing that ever happened to you that those cases got rejected because you need a lawyer to redo all this for you to do it the right way to the medical regetting the medical that's not a big deal but putting the case together strong and i would say reaching out to person number one to make sure that they are they're, they're not going to try to stab you is is really important oh okay so that's that's uh that's all you got for me today anything else no nope. thank you so much i appreciate you all right so Deke, see you buddy all right okay I'm, maybe i can call you guys and uh see what we can do i think you should okay okay bye sadiq bye buddy all right that was sadiq everyone's got some interesting cases today let's say hi to lisa see what she has to say hi lisa oh my camera mic hi how are you i'm great how are you doing i'm doing fine um i spoke to you a couple months ago this is let me recap um my husband was married his first marriage um from his first marriage he got a two-year green card but when he went to do um to take off his um conditions he um got denied because they said the question wasn't in line so he got denied he married why they said the questions that they asked it wasn't in in line with each other so he so so just to be clear he and his prior spouse filed an i-751 together they got called in for an interview and the officer said that their answers didn't match. Yeah. Like four or five of the answers didn't match. Okay. Um, we got married a couple years ago and my lawyer filed the I one thirty. um, that got denied. So after that got denied, they said they're going to send us to court. It's been seven years. We, we received an NTA, but it didn't have any date, time or locations on it. So it's been seven years now. Um, in December, my lawyer did file an appeal for the denial for the I-130. So we received um, a notice in December stating that they they received our appeal and that they remand the case back to the field office. What does that mean? That means that they, they want, why, what was the basis for the denial of the I-130? They said um, fraud. He the marriage wasn't real, or they um, because the question wasn't in line. So they said they used the the bad answers on the seven fifty one yes. to deny the current I one thirty. Yes. Just and like how did, many sisters do you have, or what do you you know? Just basic questions. I was looking over. I'm like, are you serious? I don't even remember what I eat yesterday. Mm-hmm. What um. When did the I-130 get denied? 2017. And September your, of 2017. And, and your lawyer your lawyer waited until last year to file No, no, the no. Appeal? He filed it the same time. 2007 oh. um November September of 2017 after we got the denial letter. I got you. What I'm saying we just got a response from that um appeal that he filed. I'm like 7 years later? Mm. So so as of right now, the I-130 is pending at the local field office, right? No, they denied I know, um, in I know. 2017. They, denied, they yeah. denied it. It went back up. And then the legal effect of remand is it's back at the field office as if it never left. Oh. So what what field office is it? Oakland Park, Florida. Oh, they don't mess around down in Florida, man. No. Okay. So let me ask you this. Put put aside your feelings for your husband. You. You if if I were if I were to look at the seven questions that he and his wife got wrong, they would I think would I think USCIS is full of shit or would I think he's full of shit? They're full of shit because um, the question that they ask is like, um, 
your wife went to Orlando, why didn't you go with her? What date did they went? It's like three years later, they ask us the questions from three years ago. And I'm like, I don't remember what I did three years ago. All right. So let me ask you this question. Um, how are things with your husband and that, that ex-wife? Um, she moved to um, Atlanta, Georgia, but they're still on their FaceTime or um, um, Facebook. They still have um, communication. But I called the wife and I asked her if it's possible for her to write a letter. She said, sure, no problem. The ex-wife. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So what I, what I would do, if, if I were your lawyer, what I would do is I would nail down that marriage stuff and get answers to those questions as best I can. I would get a long affidavit from the ex-wife. I get a long affidavit from your husband. And then I would send that to USCIS's field office and say- We did that. Okay. We what? did all that. And then after, as I said before, in 2017, when my, my lawyer filed the appeal, God forgive, he passed away though a couple of years ago. <laughs> That's how long the case took. When he filed the appeal, um, we did all that. And then in December of last year, we received something from the BIA stating that they receive our appeal and they remand the case and send it back to the field office. So I don't know what that mean when they said that, because my, the lawyer that took his place is very confusing. So she said it's a waiting game now. So we have to wait. Yeah, screw that. That's the one thing I don't do is wait. So I, so if you're telling me that the evidence from the ex-wife and from your husband explaining the seven questions that that all went up to the BIA and that's why they send it back down. If, I if guess that, so. The BIA sent it back down and stated my case is my motion to remand to the field office. They sent it back to Oakland Park. So I'd sue them. Sue them. Yep. You should sue them because they're just going to sit on it like they have been. I mean, they've been sitting yeah, on it's been for seven years. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Seven years and his work permit is up, his driver's license up. How are you expecting him to work and pay taxes if he can't do anything? His, dri his job consists of him driving and he's afraid to drive because he don't want to get in trouble with any little thing that they will find fault for. If you sue them, you'll probably get an interview on your case for you and him and you'll probably get the whole thing done. I don't know if it'll be approved or not, but I can get you an interview and I can get you a decision in about three months. Um, can you send me your number and we'll go from there? Yeah. Can you, um, can you, can you send an email for me to our office and then say, I say, my name is Lisa. I was on the show at the 35 minute mark. And then, um, cause I don't want to ask your phone number on the, on camera. Can yeah. you, um, I'll put the, the information, uh, right here. So that's our phone number, 314-961-8200, or you can email that info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com and just say, I was just on the show with Jim, and we were talking about my husband's case, and then we'll follow up tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Right. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, Bye -bye. see ya. So, that, so that's how they do it down at USCIS. They're playing games. You don't have to, and I was just saying to the guy before that you sometimes you have to prove not only your marriage is real, but also that the the earlier marriage that you had is real. That's a big problem. That's a big problem. So I think we can help Lisa out. We'll have to wait and see. Anita's here. Hi, Anita. Hi, Jim. How are you? Thanks for using my call. I'm good. Thank you. Sure. What can I help you with? Okay. I used you guys last year for a lawsuit, which was successful. So thank you for that. Sure. Yes. Um. So my... The lawsuit was for a green card based on asylum. Yeah. Um, my question is, can I use my country passport to travel? You, you, you probably can, but you shouldn't. Why do you want to? Um, I just wanted to go outside of the country. Yeah, then I, I would apply for a, a, a refugee travel document. You want to travel on that. You don't want to, until you become a citizen, you don't want to use your passport um, from your old country because you, you swore that it wasn't safe for you to have any involvement with that government. It's probably overkill, but the better thing to do would be to pay, to pay the fee, file an I-131 for a refugee travel document and use that to travel. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you. That was easy. Thanks, Anita. Glad the lawsuit worked. See ya. Thank you. Bye. All right. Next up, Leah. Leah's next. 
Hello, Tim. Leah, how you doing? I'm doing great. First and foremost, thank you so much for what you do. Um, I recently found your website and I've been on the lives and it's just been great hearing all the information. Great. So in August of 2022, I filed a I-130, I-485, I-765, and I-131, along with medical documents and an affidavit. Um, we could choose. That's perfect. That's that's exactly right. That's everything you're supposed to file. Good job. Yes. And so on August 23rd, I had my biometrics appointment. Um, previously, I was an F1 student. I was working with OPT. Um, once I filed those documentation, I was eligible for the C09 category. So I think I got 540 days additional um, work authorization. And so the problem is in February of this year, I traveled while my documents were still pending processing. You mean before you got advanced parole? Yes. You left the United States? Yes. Was it an emergency? No, it wasn't. Okay. All right. And so right now, um, I'm, I got a deferred inspection um, at the airport and CBP has my passport. I recently had an appointment a few days ago. Um, it was rescheduled because they weren't actually open that day. They gave me an appointment for a day they was not open. Yeah. And so they told me to come back and they told me that basically I'll constantly just be called to come in until I can prove that I have an advanced parole document. And so my thing is, will my application be denied? Should I go ahead and just start refiling everything over again or just wait to see? Because now I know in retrospect that my um, paperwork was deemed abandoned. So which CBP office, which airport is this? Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. Okay. Um, I think that your green card case has been abandoned and you're not going to get the advanced parole. So in the old days, when I first started doing immigration, we would apply for advanced parole when people were outside the United States. We would apply for it after they traveled. Nobody cared, right? But now they're super aware. I was at an interview at immigration the other day and I was really surprised because my client had advanced parole and he had permission to leave the United States. And, and the officer sitting there during the interview knew the exact date that he had left and come back, which I'd never actually had that happen before at an interview. So what I don't want to happen is for you to wait another six or eight months or nine months and then for them to say that it's, it's um, deemed abandoned. Mm -hmm. You don't have to file a new I-130, but I would file a new 45, a new 765, a new 131, and then I would go to that doctor and say, hey, I made a mistake. Would you be willing to recertify my medical without making me pay the whole fee? They might make you pay the whole fee. But oh. I do th I do think you need, you don't need to refile the I-130, but everything else you need to refile. Okay. And um, so in this case, also my driver's license will, is going to expire May 8th. And yeah. my appointment for CBP for the deferred inspection is May 16th. I would need to have my passport present and I don't have my passport. CBP has it. And I told them about my appointment. Um, they told me that I need an advanced parole document in order to get my passport back. So if, even if I want to just start fresh, know that the um, paperwork was abandoned, start everything over again, how do I get my passport so that like I can get a driver's license? And does this mean I should stop working also? Does this terminate my um, work authorization? The OPT work authorization you have? Yes. No, that doesn't terminate that. Okay. So, so no, you shouldn't stop working. But I was only working, um, my OPT ended in 2022, October. And, I, and since I filed in August of 2022, I got the extension. So I'm saying I got the extension to continue working through my pending documents. So once I refile again, I could start working again. 
Yeah, that that's tricky. I think you should maybe call the office. You might want to have an attorney go with you to advance parole. And um, I don't know. I, I I, I don't want to tell you to stop working, but I don't want to tell you to keep working either. I'd want to look at everything and see the timing of everything. Um, I don't want to just tell you that over this call. Okay. I did call your um, Washington, D.C. office, and I was told that it wasn't really a case and to try maybe come on the live. So do you want me to try reaching out again to the well, office? Just tell, when did you, Leah, when did you call the office? On two days ago. What's the first letter of your last name? I, we can look you up. L. L. Okay. We'll we'll track you down tomorrow and and follow up and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Leah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. All right. All right. Oh, I think Kim is back. Kim, are you with us? Yes, Jim. Oh. We got disconnected earlier. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Kima. Yes, Jim. I'm back. We got disconnected, huh? Yes, we did. Can you remind me what we were talking about? Because I don't remember. Sorry. Okay. So um, the case was got married last year, September. I did not file my documents oh, before. Right. right. Yeah. So um, I think you should call the office and make an appointment with one of our lawyers because I don't you're not on safe ground because you didn't file within the time that you were still in status and your spouse is not a U.S. citizen. That's what I'm worried about. Okay. So we need to talk through with you and your husband about what makes the most sense and what you're most comfortable with. All right. So you think I should just wait until my husband gets his citizenship, then I proceed in submitting my documents? That you can do that. The only problem is then you're sitting there waiting. I mean, they could come find you. You're out of status. That's the problem. Mm. All right. So what if I try to submit the form I-130? No. Yeah, that's the one thing that we might recommend doing is doing that. Um, that is saying that you're here. It doesn't yes. give you any. It doesn't give you any protection, but it would get things moving on proving up that you're married to a to a green card holder. And you don't think because I'm out of status that would probably deny me or so? No, they won't deny you for the I-130. They would deny you if you filed the 45, though. Oh, so just do the I-130 and the I-130A? But I'm not saying that on this call. I want to talk to you and your husband oh, before I understand, say that. Oh, understand, understand. Okay, Jim. All right, Kima, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. All right. Joe's been waiting patiently. Let's see what Joe has to say. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing good. Um, <clears throat> I just I just have a few questions here. Um, I have a question about tax. Uh, would you re recommend that we, I and my wife file our taxes jointly or married and filing separately? Would that be a problem? From an immigration standpoint, it'd be better to do it jointly. Okay. All right. And then next, I have a question about my I-485 form. Uh, okay. Section 8, uh, question 28. Uh, it states, uh, have you ever been ordered punished by a judge or had conditions imposed on your, sorry, imposed on you that restrain your liberty, such as a prison sentence, suspended sentence, house arrest, parole, alternative sentencing, drug or alcohol, treatment rehabilitation program or classes probation or community service so back in i believe it was 2021 i had an accident and uh i called the cops on saying he came and he gave me a ticket and he told me to take it to court and then just probably ask since it's my first time it was my first ticket i can ask for uh probation before judgment and then the judge will probably have me sit for like i mean if i don't have any uh other other offense, I will be fine for about six million. I won't have I wouldn't have anything on my record. So for that question, I answered no, but I did got that uh probation before judgment. And the reason why I did say no is because I saw probation as like more of a criminal offense, like something something a little different. I didn't see it as the probation before judgment. So I don't know whether my answer to saying no to that question was correct. 
It's okay. I would update it at the interview and bring the records. Was it a, a traffic citation? Was it a misdemeanor? Was it a felony? What no, was it? it? It was a traffic citation. Uh, it was basically my car had to play off the road and I hit like a construction like pole. Yeah. So I would just bring proof that you paid it and that you satisfied the probation and and then just show it to the officer at your interview. Right. And I also I also give that I, I also submitted the court document in my application form. Oh, yeah, you're fine. No big okay. deal. All right. So so would you would you recommend that if I happen to go for the interview? Would you recommend that I, I tell the adjudicator before the in interview start? Yeah, look up my video. I have a video on errata sheets. E R R A T A. It talks exactly about how to how to handle that. What you'll do is you'll type up the question, you'll type up your revised answer, and you'll hand it to them with your green card when you get there. Okay. Um, and then one last question I have is, is a question about unauthorized work. So yeah. I I was reading online, I was reading on the, on the on I believe it was either IRS or USCIS website, and they had an article there listing like things that fall under uh, unauthorized work in the United States. Yeah. So back I believe it was around 2020 when COVID just started, I had a few things uh, that I wanted to sell uh, because I I mean I, I didn't feel it I didn't feel like it was it was needed at the time so i decided to post it on facebook marketplace yeah to sell it and then some of them sold some i sold some of them and then some of them was on their side so i recently took it down and i saw on, on that on the article they were saying that if you happen to sell things on ebay they only mentioned ebay but i know that if you sell stuff online that's also considered as unauthorized work these are just these are things that you own versus like drop shipping shoes or something. Uh, these are things that oh, I actually bought it and I used them for like a while. And actually, yeah. some things I bought, I actually I think I bought it to sell. I, I just can't remember one hundred percent what it was, but I think some things I bought it was actually to like resell or something like that. If you bought it to resell, then I, I would say that might fall under there. I think it's all BS and you don't really need to worry about it. But if you're married to a U.S. citizen, it's all forgiven. So you might as well add that to your errata sheet. OK, so I, so once I get to the interview, I will just answer, I will just tell the lady that I want to correct uh, question 16, where they ask about unauthorized work. And yeah, I would just I would just hand it to her and let I wouldn't say anything. I'd say I have this errata sheet and here's my green card or here's my work card, my passport. Here you go. And then be quiet. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for answering my question. Thanks, Joe. Good luck, buddy. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's say hi to Tuxi. Tuxi, you with us? Hey, I'm here. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for having me. Sure. I, I think you're doing great service. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, thanks. I want to briefly explain my situation. In 2018, uh, I married my husband online. I was living in Turkey meanwhile. Then he came to be with me. Then we start living together. And at 2020, we married in Turkey. Before that, I got my uh, tourist visa. I visited the United States like two times. And uh, in our visits like last year summer we also got married here to just have another certificate to have our marriage like well in both countries and last summer uh, in 2022 we came here again to uh, for my husband spending time with his family here's then, the, here here's the united states when you say here you mean the united states yeah <laughs> okay and okay. um, then he didn't want to go back to turkey so we fill our like adjustment of status papers and everything. It was like uh, last October. Now I'm waiting for everything. I'm waiting for like five months. <laughs> and I'm like, is there any problem in my process? Like, is there anything that I can do to make it faster? I didn't have a lawyer before. Is like lawyer can help me after this point to make things faster those are like general questions that i have great so let's back up a little bit let's let's nail down this timeline a little bit so so what is the date of your first marriage your online marriage um our marriage was at 2020 october that's your your first marriage or your second mm -hmm. marriage 
uh, my first match. I made with the same guy, same American yeah, guy. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Yeah. So when did you meet that person that you married? In 2018. So you met in 2018. You got married online 2020. Mm -hmm. We didn't met online. We met in Turkey. Oh, sorry. I married online. Sorry. We met online. <laughs> okay. So, so you met in 2018. When did you meet mm -hmm. face to face for the first time? I think it was 2018 again. He come to okay. see me, then he go back to United States, and he's here now. <laughs> okay, so so then you got married online, and then you went and got your visit visa to the United States. Mm -hmm. And when you got your visit visa to the United States, did they ask if you were married to a U.S. citizen? Uh, we wasn't married back then. When I got my visa, we weren't married. We were talking, and they didn't ask me if I married with him. <laughs> So, so you had the visit visa before you got married. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just, I'm hi. I'm just trying to nail down, I'm trying to nail down the timeline. So you met face to face in 2018. Mm -hmm. You got visit visa to the United States in 2018. You got married in 2020. Is that all right? I think I got my visa in 2019. 19. 19 uh, okay but before you got married yeah yes. before i got yeah. married and um and then you came to the united states how many times have you entered the united states twice twice okay and when was your when was your last entry to the united states i mean i came here three times if we including this one no, and... but the last time was last summer uh 2022 okay and when did you get married after that before that Oh yeah, right. Because you got married online. Um, no, no, no. Um, we got married while we were in Turkey. Oh, you got married in Turkey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I what I'm trying to figure out is whether I need to worry about any misrepresentations to any U.S. government official. Did anyone ever ask if you're married to a U.S. citizen? Did anyone ask if you're coming to see your husband? Did anyone ever ask anything about marriage when you entered the United States those three times? And we entered no, no, nobody asked about that. Like, nobody asked if we were married. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So the last entry was in 2022. What what month? Um. June. Seven. I, I think it was in June. And then when did you file? When did you file the I-130 and the 485 and everything? October. I guess. Okay. And that's been pending for five months and you're worried about why it's taking so long. Yeah. These cases are taking at least a year now. So you, you're, you're just getting started. Really? Did you get, yeah. finger, did you get fingerprinted? Yeah. Yeah. She went, yeah, we already got. When was that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that was at November. Oh no, that was October. Wait, November. November of yeah, last November year. 9th. Okay. Not this year. No, last uh, year. Last year, sorry. Last year, yeah. And so if you if you have a green card interview, what field office will it be at? Denver, Colorado. Yeah, so they're pretty busy. So you're you're probably going to get your work card. If you got fingerprinted in November, you'll probably get your work card in April or May. And then you'll probably have your interview in October or November. If you if you have an interview. Mm-hmm. So you're just, I, you're just waiting. You're just waiting. I'm just waiting. And if I had a like green card, will it be like for ten years or two years? Because we it'll be it'll be years. it'll be ten year green card. So if I had a lawyer, it doesn't change my waiting process. <laughs> only only to the extent that it's a little bit of a confusing history. Maybe you and I didn't connect the right way on it. Maybe it could lay it out a little better. Lawyers know how to do things a little faster and make sure that there aren't mistakes and stuff. But there's mm -hmm. there's nothing right now given the, the relatively short amount of time that you've been waiting that a lawyer could do. No. So like, there's nothing that like an inquiry would do to speed up the process. I think, I think Tuche is just a little um, eager to start working. Um, so we can save up money faster to move out of my uh, parents' house. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's a lot of people in that same boat though. So that's not the, that they're not going to expedite it. You're just going to bang yeah. your head on the wall. 
Right on. And there's like another thing, like because he was living with me, he didn't pay his taxes for like uh, how many years? Two well, I wasn't years. working in the United States for yeah, two years. Yeah, he wasn't working. And like with him, his mom also, that we live in her house, uh, also feel, um, what was the name of the... Affidavit of support. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 864A for us. Yeah. yeah. Is that correct? Too? Well, so as we sit... Um... I don't know your name, sir. Uh, my name is Andrew. Andrew, as we sit here today, Andrew, have you filed tax returns for the last couple of years or no? Um, I just filed for, since I've gotten back, I started working in August with my dad. So I filed for August to, you know, the, the whole year of last year that I worked in the United States. So when you filled out your affidavit of support, you did not submit tax returns for 2021 or 2020? Correct. Yeah, that's going to slow you down. I'm pretty sure they're going to ding you for that and they're going to send you a request for evidence. Even though you have a co-sponsor, they're going to they use us as a hammer to make sure that people file their tax returns. So I'm pretty sure they're going to ask you for tax returns. So even if you have zero income or zero tax return, they still want to see it. Okay. Before, before they even get to mom's co-sponsor affidavit of support. So okay. you might you, you better start working on that, I would say. So so Am I, 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 so I, I may have been uh, ignorant about taxes, but am I supposed to file taxes even if I didn't make a penny that year? That's a question for your CPA. I don't know the answer okay. to that question. Okay. I think from, from immigration standpoint, yes, they need, they're like, think dumb robot. Where, yeah. Where's, where's Andrew's tax return? Where's Andrew's Not tax return? Not here. Problem. Can, yeah. Cannot, okay. adva cannot advance. Cannot advance. Right. Advance. right. So, so that's so what it's it's um, so like I, I, if if I had been your lawyer, I wouldn't let you file without I wouldn't let you file the case without having the tax returns done, because okay. that's going to buy two months time if they ask for it. Okay. So if you want our help, send us an email and we'll be happy to jump in and try to clean things up and get you ready and everything. Uh, but you know, if not, that's the deal. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Have so a good much. day. You All right, everybody. That'll do it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel, 4 p.m. Central. I'll be coming to you from my under construction house. And uh, I hope you all have a good night. And remember, if you want to uh, get a text when we're going live, you want to get the link to the waiting room, you should send the word show, S-H-O-W, to 314-470-3300, and Umar will send you out a notice tomorrow morning. Peace.